All right, let's talk to Renee again from California. Oh, Renee in California. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, Renee. What can we help you with today? Okay. Well, I just wanted to talk about what you guys believe in the spiritual realm. Uh, what is your take on it? And where do you yeah. guys stand? Uh, I don't think it exists. I am unconvinced. Uh, but I don't necessarily see it as being uh, the thing that is going to affect my life. <laughs> so in the same way, like I can, you know, there can be atheists who believe in the spiritual realm, right? Like, because necessarily you know, God does not necessarily equate to a spiritual realm or vice versa. Uh, I myself don't find it convincing at all, um, or at least I have not seen evidence of it. Uh, but that's, that's me. Dave, how about you? I tend to agree. I, when you say spiritual realm, I'm assuming that that means that there's something out there that beyond what we can see and understand and, and see evidence for. I'm, I'm more of a materialist when it comes to that. And, and if it's not something that, that I can point to and say, yeah, this makes sense. Yeah, this is rational and reasonable. I don't feel the need for there to be a spiritual element to life. I think life is just life. We live, we die, and, and we go back to the earth um, or back to universe or matter or whatever the energy is that we came from. Um, I, I don't feel the need. I don't. I, when I let go of Christianity, I let go of any need for there to be a God or a deity or a spiritual element to life whatsoever. But, but that said, like V said, people who uh, – Feel that there is that, that there's a spiritual element, that there's something out there beyond ourselves. To me, it's a fairly harmless ideology. It doesn't, it doesn't seek to impose itself upon other people. It's just something individuals hold on to as a matter of comfort or their own personal beliefs. And so I don't find it problematic at all. What what about you, Renee? How do you feel? Okay, well, I mean, I believe in it. I, I am a, a new coming back to Christianity after falling away from religion for a, quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, but well, as far as your beliefs for creation and everything, are you guys more on the scientific of uh, the Big Bang or evolution or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. So, Renee, you, uh, Re Renee, you take this. I'm going to refresh per the host, and I'll be right back. They want right. me to refresh, and I'll, I'll be right jump back. In. So, Renee, my thinking here is that while the spiritual realm as its own thing is not necessarily, um, while the spiritual realm is not necessarily a, an ideology itself and is not necessarily always as harmful as an organized religion, I would say that there are situations where it can actually be uh, quite harmful, especially mediums, people who, who prey on those that are grieving in order to, you know, pretend that they're talking to, you know, their loved ones and conveying messages. Uh, also, you know, some kinds of fortune telling, some are harmless and fun, but others might actually have negative consequences consequences for people, especially if they take them too seriously and end up making a mistake with their life. So I think my instinct here is the best thing we can do is go with what we know and say, I don't know to everything else. And not necessarily a hard no, you're, you're, I can't believe you believe this, you know, how dare you, but hey, present me with evidence yeah. and then I will be convinced yeah. of it. But if you can't do yeah. that, then I'm going to, you know, not weigh in and say until proven otherwise, I'm not going to assume this thing exists. Okay. Well, I just wanted to kind of, I don't know if you guys already know this or, but most of the people that are behind our, all of our scientific knowledge that we have so far from the 20th century, you, do you know that they all, believe in like the spiritual realm and they all were occultists and practice black magic and worship or, or practice Luciferian worship. Um, I mean, that's news to me. Uh, literally. 
See, I would need evidence for that particular claim, Renee. Where are you hearing this from? It's all in the books. The books, huh? Which book? Manly P. Hall. The Manly P. Hall Secret Teachings of All Ages. You got ISIS in America from uh, Madame Blavatsky. You got Aleister Crowley. You got Hitler, who was uh, very deep in the occult. Um, The SS, the Black Sun. You got... I mean, I can go on uh, even. Uh, wait, wait. So you're you're giving me Carl, examples Carl of, of of people, and I, I I agree that certain of those individuals, like Alistair Crowley, of course, was into, you know, magic. As was Young, had a lot of, uh, you know, kind of occult leanings. Sure, but these are not the people who are making our scientific discoveries. You specifically said people behind science but and scientific discoveries. So who who are you talking about here? Young is like one of our main founders for psychology. He well, is, a certain is, form of psychology that has since been integrated things. into a better understanding of things. So here, Renee, I think the thing we want to make sure we're saying here is, yes, there are certainly people in every field that believe some really out there stuff. And it might or it might not play into their discoveries itself, right? There might be some things that, you know, Freud or Jung have said that actually were directly influenced by, you know, whatever beliefs they held. But the good thing about the scientific method, right, is that we are able to test those things and over the course of time, get rid of those things that are not substantiated. So the fact that one or two of these people may believe a certain thing really, for me, doesn't impact that final end result because it has passed through so many people at that point and been refined down to as as close to a fact as we can get a lot of the time. So... I guess my question for you is, apart from, you know, where are you hearing this? Also, (laughs) like, are you saying that because some of these people had beliefs that we should also have these beliefs? Is that your argument here? You know, what I'm saying is that because they have these beliefs, and when you worship, obviously, Lucifer, uh, he's the father of lies. So when you influence starting from the children, you can have the next generation, as said by Aleister Crowley. You start with the children and you've got the next generation at your will. Yeah, what churches do. However you want to raise them, however you want them in the schools, you change all the books. That's why you got Carl Jung doing psychology. you got um, Nietzsche um, doing some I know he's in the literal, uh, literal like, I forgot what he teaches, but it's Wait, Nietzsche? A lot to do with... Yeah. Nietzsche was a philosopher. <laughs> he didn't teach kids. He was, he was part of the... He was part of... He, he was in... He's in the um, the textbooks. A lot of his... What they read in little... Like what? Give me give me a Nietzsche quote textbook. from a kid's textbook. I'm curious. I, I want didn't, to read the I didn't, I didn't get that in school. Yeah. Maybe I, this because I was homeschooled yeah, no. as a Christian, but uh, I have well, never. I didn't even know about. I did not know about Tesla. You know, my stepson, who already graduated, he it learned about Tesla. I didn't know about Tesla when I was in school. Mm-hmm. Is Tesla was, you know, occult? Is Tesla demonic? Yes, Tesla was an occult. Tesla was an occultist too. So we, I want to go back to the Satanist the Lucifer is the father of lies. What? Where do where do you where does that come from? Where does that idea come from? Well, that comes from the Bible. And so, how do we know that there is even a, a yeah? How do we know that there is even a Lucifer? Right. How do we know that there's even a Lucifer or a Satan or anything like that? Well, even if there is or is not, they, those people still worshipped him, and Luciferian worship is still very active to this day wait so the whole world is so you're saying that somebody can worship an imaginary being that doesn't exist and that some wouldn't that completely negate any effects of the worship like who cares if i'm worshiping something that doesn't exist and can't impact the reality okay but they can impact a whole generation without you whether you believe it or not Okay, what is the goal here? What so, What is the goal 
<laughs> ultimately impacting these kids because yeah. I know I know yeah. why religion does it because they can't get actual adult converts most of the time until QAnon happened. But um, why why are they doing this? Why do they want the kids? Okay, so it, it, I mean, if you go back just from the beginning of the 1900s, you see the fall from religious religious beliefs. Do we? Okay, you know the fall. What do you mean? You see the yeah, fall from. That's the fall. I mean, you got you mean the enlightenment who were who were raised in Christian families more or more in, in a religious household. They were, you know, the girls weren't allowed to show much skin. They were more respectful, more just. So it's not real, well, like well, religion. Well, That's like compared to the kids now. Yeah. Wait, so you're saying that before the 1900s, women couldn't no, show no, as much no, skin, like, and because start. that's not the case anymore, Satan is in the schools? No, no. Wow, you're making... No. Okay, <laughs> explain it to me. Where am I going I'm wrong? Saying, I'm saying... I'm saying... From... Just say, from the starting of the 1900s, it, families were more of, you know, of godly. They They read the Bible. They... They were respectful, friendly. There was no, you know, craziness like there is. You can't say that there's not a big difference from the beginning of the 1900s to now. I mean, wait, but you were no longer, saying that in the 20th century, century, all of this. Control. Wait, Renee, I think Renee, you were just saying that in the 19th century, in the 1900s, uh, 20th yeah, century, all of the these, 1900s. all of these people were occultists and now you're saying that it was amazing back then and today is crazy no, like no, i'm not saying it was amazing i'm not saying it was amazing i'm saying see the transformation see the change you know albert pike who was the freemason was back in the 1880s and he foretold of the three wars world war one world war two world war three wait are you a freemason exact no i'm not a freemason <laughs> No. Oh, I was excited for a minute. What are what are you? Are you a Christian? I'm a Christian. Yes. Okay. You're referring to the occult world. Yeah, uh, I can I tell. Can tell. Uh, uh, and that's fine. I, I think you're, what you're referring to is more of a societal change, Victorian era, where women could yeah, only sorry, dress. That's like, yes. Yeah. It's but that's I I think no, I think no, not, not all the way back to Victorian, but. Yeah. I think I think fundamentalist Christianity is as strong now as it's ever been. I mean, my God, we've seen it in the, in the the whole last four years and and I'm and the Christian nationalism and the and the rise of that where this alt right group I mean you can't you can't divorce the uh, white supremacists from the Christian nationalists they're in lockstep now oh no and yeah. and they're and that's there's becoming also, that's becoming more prevalent that's becoming more prevalent not less prevalent uh, the ideology there's, that Christianity is being um, uh, shut down and they're taking Bibles away and closing churches. That's bullshit. That ain't mm -hmm. happening. Uh, uh, they have more influence now in the government and you can't even take a, a vow of public office without putting your hand on a Bible. You can, it's not, it's not a law, but no one does it. And uh, they have a national prayer breakfast. I mean, this stuff is as prevalent as it's ever been. The separation of church and state is just not happening as, as it should. So we've got Christian, We've got Christianity uh, well, as as strong and prevalent in this country any anyway as it's ever been. Now people dress differently and they wear hip clothes to church, but that's just Victorian uh, societal changes that have happened. Not not so much that Christianity has. Well, you know the the gone away. also, for you know, they say that they're Christian. You know, many groups can call themselves Christians to pretty much corrupt Christianity. You know, those ones with the big old stadiums and that are, have more plastic surgery than anything and, and go and hollering and, and, and making people faint. And that you don't think they're not, Christians. That's not, that's not the Christianity from the Bible. That's their they, own. They think it is. They no. think it is. No, yeah. How would we know? How would we know the difference? How so, do we know who a true Christian trademark how, is? Yeah. Because a, tr a a Christian doesn't doesn't ask for money and wealth like that. They don't they don't look the fakeness. They don't go 
into celebrity mode and have to drive the biggest, fattest cars and have the nicest houses. They don't need that. That's not necessary. That is not what they desire. All they desire is... Renee, (laughs) you you are advocating, from my understanding of Christian Christianity being the predominant culture. You don't think that counts as a power grab? No. Well, it's the same desire to be the biggest and the best, do. just in a different way. So how do we know who's who's who, right? Like say, say uh, Joel Osteen calls in and says, Renee isn't a real Christian. And now Renee says, Joel isn't a real Christian. How do we know who's right? Well, you should go by their actions, by how they talk. Are they selfish? Are they self-involved? Are they, are they not talking about God? Are they not talking about, you know, the love and kindness of, of, of trying to save people, of trying to, you know, just bring love to the world? Or are they talking about their own self, their self-needs and money, money? I want this check. I want this check. Or, you know, worry about you. Don't worry about God. God wants you to be happy. Worry about yourself. This is all self-narcissistic. I mean, we already have enough of that in this society. I agree. It's, Renee, you're the one saying that everyone who disagrees a, with you is influenced by the devil. You don't think that's a little self-involved? You'll be surprised. You, you don't think people want fame and money and they won't do anything for it? I well, mean, I mean, that, that's not the really point want. here. Okay, we Renee. Hear- Renee, we hear I, all the time that I am going one, to. Sorry, go ahead, Dave. You you well, get to close just, this out. Well, I, I, there's not. I mean, the problem is we hear from one group of Christians that everyone else besides the way they do it is not a true Christian, and we hear from another group of Christians that that this other group is not doing it right, and they all point to the Bible as their source. They just point to different verses from the Bible. Uh, you can make the Bible say anything you want it to. Because Joel Osteen and Paula White and all of these people who claim to be Christians will point to certain scriptures that they're living out. You're going to say you've got certain scriptures that you're living out. And every one of these groups points to the other one and says, you're not doing it right. You're not a true Christian. Only we are true Christians. And I've been hearing that my my whole life. I don't say that I'm a true Christian or any. I'm just saying you should see by the actions. It's not if one's to judge. Nobody, that's the thing too. I mean, a true Christian in the Bible, it literally says, do not judge for you are not perfect yourself. Renee, you just said that everyone is lying because of they, you you (laughs) called in here to judge everybody who was teaching Nietzsche in this school. You can tell the difference. No, no, I'm not saying. You okay. think Donald Trump's a Christian? Tell the difference on how they act and how they perceive themselves. We're gonna, That's we're gonna, we're gonna move on. How can I tell a, a, a true Christian? Yeah, Renee, we're gonna move on for right now. Uh, you are welcome to call back next week. I know Eric, my co-host, would love to talk with you. Okay. Thank you, Renee. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All I know. Uh, is, all, <laughs> all, all I know is Donald Trump's the best Christian I've ever seen. Oh yeah. The way he holds the Bible, I mean, you can't make that shit up. You can't, uh, just bigly, like just the bigly, best. Bigly all, the, all the people are saying it. Everyone's saying I'm the b- bigliest oh, Christian. Goodness. Okay, but like, <laughs> I don't you, know. Can we can we sit back and appreciate for one moment the fact that she calls in to say that everybody who disagrees with her is influenced by satanic lies, and then says you, you can't judge Christians don't judge others. Yeah, I, I just I the. <laughs> The cognitive dissonance in that is just stunning. Uh, oh, my goodness. I'm going to beat myself up for how I handled that particular call. I'm going to watch it over <laughs> and over again and just like. You were fine. Myself. You were fine. You. Were I fine. was so happy, though. I was so excited. I love that kind of call. Yeah. Even if I do make an ass out of myself.